Let me tell you, Microsoft must be fuming right now at 343, not just about the state of Halo Infinite and the current updates, which are almost minimal to none, but I'm talking about the Halo TV show and how it really did more damage than benefit to the franchise. And why now would Microsoft be fuming about it? Well, because Cyberpunk is back and it's alive, baby. That's because of the new Cyberpunk Edge Runner show that's been going live on Netflix. You can see right now at the time of recording this video, Cyberpunk is currently sitting number seven as the one of the most played games right now on Steam with over a peak player count of 118,000. And if you're a Halo fan, you definitely recognize this is the infamous Steam Charts website right here. You can see the population kind of just being just whatever, you know, around 10,000 so odd players. But then with that recent update, it's gone live and this TV show going up. I mean, we had over 136,000 people playing at one time for Cyberpunk. With now 20 million copies sold and towards the end of September, over 1 million players played Cyberpunk 2077. That is absolutely crazy. Now you might have to wait till 2077 to get some cool cyberware or 2552 until to get some cool Mjolnir to wear, but you don't have to wait very long at all to have some awesome clothing wear to put on yourself right now. Thanks to today's sponsor, Into the AM. Into the AM are a team of artists and creators who share a common vision. They see clothing as a canvas to express what drives you. Since 2012, they developed premium apparel that elevates self-expression and provides unparalleled comfort for wherever your passions take you. Into the AM recently sent me some apparel to check out and honestly guys, I'm really enjoying this stuff. I like the art style they put on the shirts and I also got some cool joggers to go with it that fit me really well. If you're not into all the crazy styles, don't worry, they have some simple tees for you as well. They fit great, they feel great, and I genuinely do enjoy their products. From October 6th to 11th, they're doing a 30% off clearance sale on their website. But wait, there's more. If you use my code KevinCollects, you receive an additional 10% off of your purchase. Plus I get a little kickback and help support the channel as well. Into the AM has been a long time sponsor of the channel and I genuinely do enjoy their products a lot. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you much Into the AM for sponsoring the video. So let's get right back into those details. Given the fact that this game was dragged through the gutter when it comes to being poor releases, it was buggy, borderline unplayable, totally immersion breaking, especially for an RPG game, you need to have that immersion to be able to feel like you're in the world, and when you have all these bugs and glitches, it really gets in the way of things. Hello there, Night City! What the... What the... What is this? <laughs> what was that? What the fuck is that bug? Now me coming as a Halo fan, it hits even harder because that was the whole idea of the Halo TV show. But as we know, the Halo TV show, well, it didn't really go over super well with fans. No. No! <laughs> what is this? Get Neil Blomkamp on the job. Go and get Peter Jackson back on the job. What? This is like genuinely worse than the worst fan fiction. I'm sorry, I'm still kind of processing what I just watched. As you can see by the title, I seriously don't know what the fuck I just watched. <laughs> I disagree highly with a lot of the decisions made for the silver timeline version of Halo. Here on Rotten Tomatoes, given to 52% by the fans and only 69% from official critics, yeah, things could definitely have been a lot better for the Halo TV show. Given that Halo's population actually was continuing to decline when the show came out and only rose back up when season two released back in the beginning of May. So in this video, I'm going to discuss why Cyberpunk saw so much success recently while the Halo TV show couldn't capture that. Now, if you like these type of discussion videos, make sure you tap that like button. It really lets me know you want to see some more content like this and it is the best way to help support the channel. So let's get right back into those details. He said it! He said it! Now, as you can tell by my background right here, I'm a bit of a Halo fan. So when the Halo show was announced and coming out, I was super excited about it. And I would say for overall, the show definitely had some highlights, but certainly some lowlights as well. Hello, Master Chief. I'm Cortana. 
Are you sure about that? Now there actually are some pretty significant similarities between the two shows where Cyberpunk is like its own standalone story. It doesn't really tie in a whole lot with the actual story that you play within the game, though it is canon with the Cyberpunk Edge Runner show where the Halo TV show wasn't. Though both shows also feature characters from the game itself. But the TV show, of course, you had Master Chief, Halsey, Cortana, uh, the Keyses, very recognizable characters from the franchise, guaranteed to do well within that show. And the Cyborg show also had familiar characters from the game as well, as in Rogue, mentioning of Adam Smasher, and Wakako, just to name a few that were in there. So there is that similarity between the shows, so that's a great job to see that integration. Though the big difference is obviously the story when it comes to these two shows. Edge Runners really felt like a similar story to we had in the actual game of Cyberpunk, but just from a different perspective and seeing how this kid just starts off from basically losing everything to becoming one of the most notable people in the city. Where the Halo TV show uh, took their own liberties. A big difference is also who made the shows as well. Studio Trigger, definitely known for their anime, has some associations with very familiar animes as well. CD Projekt Red felt that they would be the best team to capture what cyberpunk in anime would definitely feel like. And after watching the cyberpunk show, I would definitely have to agree with that. Now, I'm not much of an anime fan myself, but I just definitely enjoyed the show and the world that the characters that they were creating. So CD Projekt Red goes out to a studio to capture the right kind of feel that they want to have for their show, get the right kind of people to have had experience within that genre. What did 343 and Halo do? Well, something a little different. Stephen Kane, who is known for his work on The Closer and The Last Ship, so yeah, not exactly sci-fi material, which definitely requires its own type of writing style. And with Kyle Killen here, one of the show creators as well, known for The Beaver, Mind Games, uh, Fear Street. He was a writer on the show Lone Star, which is like a drama show and stuff like that. So again, like not much in the way of actual sci-fi. So these guys are definitely known for like their drama when it comes to creating a show. And it definitely felt like it took hold within the Halo TV show as well. I'd also mention a big reason why that the Cyberpunk Edge Runner show has had so much success is because it's on a platform people actually use. Netflix is one of the go-to streaming services when it comes to watching anything online. Like somebody knows somebody who is using the password to get into someone's Netflix account. Where on the other hand, the Halo TV show was on Paramount Plus. And I know nobody who has Paramount Plus. I actually got it through a friend because they work for a company that gets it for free. That right there already was a huge hit for the Halo TV show to succeed. Even though in a Paramount earnings call, they said that Halo is a huge global hit. Going from 6.8 million subscribers to 40 million subscribers for Paramount Plus alone. Though when you search Netflix's subscriber count, it's 220 million. Another big hit for the Halo TV show was that it was available first in the US and then I believe like a month later it was available to be viewed outside the US. But obviously with the internet and interconnected media, people outside of the uh, US definitely already knew what was going on with the show before we even had a chance to watch it. Or at least we're able to see the sentiment from people saying that yeah it wasn't really that great. Now if you ask the casual player why is cyberpunk blowing up right now people go oh it's because of edge runners it is that it certainly plays a factor but there is more to it than just the netflix show cd project red released a massive 1.6 update to the game of cyberpunk putting in new content from the edge runner show on september 6th and then on september 13th the netflix show edge runners aired absolute perfect time when it comes to getting the game into a good state fix a lot of bugs with this 1.6 update we're getting like a apartment customization, transmog, make so your character doesn't look like a fool in the game, uh, more ripper docs that can replace your body parts and stuff like that so you can actually edit your character's features and role play a bit more in the game, new visual modes to experience the city in a different way, easter egg tie-ins from the show put into the game. You can even wear the main character's jacket from the show in the game. That's really freaking cool. So what did Halo do to kind of tie into the show with the game? On May 10th, about two months after the release of the show, the show was almost done by the point this update came out with this show tie into the game with the season two update. You got a few emblems, two weapon charms, and well, that's it. Nothing actually cool from the show was put into the game. You didn't get like Soren's dust or anything like that, or any of Silver Team's armor sets you can put onto your character in game. No, none of that. You get a couple weapon charms a couple months after the release of the show. And the cool thing about getting David's jacket within Cyberpunk is that there's a bit of a side quest to the whole thing, some text messages with characters from the show 
in the game and then you go out to the city where David is from to grab his jacket. You can put it on yourself in the character and it levels up to your character level too, which is amazing. And remember with Halo, you get a weapon charm. Cool. I think 343 also needs to take note from this cyberpunk presentation about the 1.6 edge runners update video that they posted on their YouTube channel is that it also had bad news tied to this whole thing, but it just got overshadowed completely. The bad news being that this 1.6 update is the last update for last gen consoles. So all future updates coming to cyberpunk, that means like content and features will be happening on current gen and PC where just major bug fixing will only happen on the last gen consoles, no new features, which is a terrible shame to see. If it was 343 doing this, they probably would make an entire video dedicated to saying we're dropping last gen support and then people would be mad. But the thing is that they tied it in with such great news with their presentation that it goes like, yeah, kind of makes sense. They also mentioned a brand new DLC of Phantom Liberty coming out next year, a whole new story experience to have in Cyberpunk. So now you have the current update that's happening, the update that's happening with the consoles, which is a bad news, but then you have more stuff to look forward to with the game. You didn't get anything that with Halo. It's gotten to the point that whenever I see Joseph staining and sketched in on a couple chairs talking to each other, you gotta expect some bad news coming your way. Another reason why I feel that Edge Runners has done so well compared to the Halo TV show was that Edge Runners did the animated format because doing that way can really help capture the feeling and emotions that you want to capture within the show and the environments that you need to have within the world. Edge Runners does an amazing job of setting up the story, building out this world and these characters to show like what it's like to live in Night City at this time as this kid in this situation situation not bound by any physical limitations let's just say where the halo tv show going live action i feel like it's more of a holdover from when the halo movie failed back in the early 2000s i'm sure many of you know that back in the early 2000s peter jackson's production company and many other people tied to that were trying to make a halo movie happen and eventually things just kind of fell apart microsoft and fox just kind of lost interest with the whole thing and then they got shut down which later took those assets and made district 9 which is one of the cult classic for sci-fi films and back then, live action was the way to go when it comes to bringing these kind of environments to life because back then, like CGI, it was good, but it was very limited and it was difficult to convey reality and suspend disbelief when you're watching some animated shows back then, at least when it comes to CGI animations. And we definitely saw within the Halo TV show, there was some questionable CGI. Hold your position. But to truly capture the scale and the, the art style of what Halo is, I feel like going to CGI animation would have really been the best way. Imagine if we had an animated show made by Blur Studios, like Halo 2 anniversary quality cutscenes, if that's even possible for a show, but then put that in the Halo. Oh my God, that would absolutely blow people's minds. Instead, with the live action side of things, you're so limited about what you really can accomplish with what these Spartans really can do, which is accurate to lore and what the sci-fi elements of what Halo can offer are. You can make these large, grandiose, detailed environments because you're only limited by time and imagination. Or say, for example, when they went to the rubble, right? Where it's this interconnected link of different asteroids, but then when you go into it, it really just feels like tight and confined, much more like a set rather than like a place where people actually live. Just watch these CGI recreations from Halo VFX and tell me that would not be an amazing show. New, unfinished. I'm not exactly sure what will happen when we fire it. We'll head for the portal. And we'll all go home. Thanks. We're changing course. That was least compromise, and we're rerouting now. Stay on my team. Doesn't that just feel more like Halo? That feels way more like Halo than the Halo TV show ever did. Edge Runners really feel like it captured the essence of what Cyberpunk really is, capturing that gritty city feel where you're kind of thrown into a terrible situation but trying to make the best of it, kind of stuff, people living in squalor while the higher ups are just the overpowering enemies of everything. Where the Halo TV show felt more like just like another drama show almost. People can even compare it to the CW, which is, ugh. 
that's bad. Which kind of makes sense with the creators of the Halo TV show having an extensive history with more dramatic shows rather than sci-fi shows, where Studio Trigger having tons of experience when it comes to anime and capturing that art style and feel that CD Projekt Red was looking for. Now with the Halo TV show recording its second season right now, I could expect to see it probably come back around most likely around March, maybe sometime during the summer. It doesn't really look like we will get a season two of the Cyberpunk show, uh, just because it seems like it'd be more of a one-off rather than an actual continuous series but it's hoped that the halo tv show learns from their mistakes and odd choices in season two to really help create something better than what we had in season one which was all right but certainly had a lot of flaws with it and hopefully 343 can time the release of content or updates along with this Halo show. With season three finally releasing in March, going until June 27th, we could hopefully see the show release around those bookmark ends of that season. We just kind of have to wait and see, honestly. And that is why the Cyberpunk Edge Runner show is succeeding and blowing up Cyberpunk once again, while the Halo TV show failed to do just that. If you made it this far into the video, I hope I earned your like. Let me know in the comments down below what you'd like to see me talk about next when it comes to Halo or Cyberpunk or in gaming just in general. As you know, I'm all about the details. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to tap subscribe. And if you missed any content from me recently, check out this video right here. This is what the YouTube algorithm says from me. You'll probably enjoy. Check it out. It's another video from me. I do it all the time. Catch you all in the next one. Peace out.